Hello, my lovely friends. Today, I am excited to share with you on a continuation of a topic that I have discussed previously, and that's on the heart-brain link. And specifically, I want to share with you how naturopathic medicine can support this mind-body-heart connection. So more and more, we've seen that holistic methods are becoming vindicated and they're becoming embraced in conventional medicine. We now are seeing that we cannot divide our body into specific organ parts and treat them separately and expect our whole body to function effectively. And we also know that the mind and the body are interwoven and that they interact with each other and affect each other. There is ample evidence that exists now between how the heart is linked to the brain, how digestive health impacts the immune system, brain health, and just about everything else, and how mental health affects our physical health. That narrow viewpoint that health is simply the absence of disease, if you followed me for a while, hopefully that belief is being converted to something bigger, that health and wellness are actually a comprehensive and dynamic concept. And that means it's inclusive of the body, the mind, the spirit, lifestyle, your genetic factors, of course, the environment that you're in or have been exposed to, and physical health factors. So all of these are all interplaying with each other and affecting everything else. And you really can't impact one without having an impact on the other. So what's cool about this approach is that health can be seen as not an endpoint, but as a resource to help balance out all these aspects in order to have optimal well-being and better life in a better life where we can live out our passions and have a sense of meaning. Now part of the problem with some of integrative health as well as conventional medicine is it can become narrowly focused on just specific treatments. And because they are more popular, some of the other things get ignored. And I've seen this a little bit with integrative medicine, whereas in conventional medicine, sometimes it translates to using medicine to just chase symptoms away or to suppress a disease process. Now that is necessary and appropriate at times, but it's not this full dynamic viewpoint of health that I just mentioned. And in integrative and holistic medicine, sometimes the focus is so much on diet and lifestyle and fitness and exercise that we forget all these other inter interwoven factors and spirituality and mind and body and beliefs and values. And that's unfortunate because these latter aspects that I just mentioned, as well as social connection, actually may be more important in determining health outcomes. We saw that previously in the video I did, which you can find in a link to the accompanying article to this video. Where, where actually cardiovascular mortality was independently predicted by social connections, by isolation, and by feelings of perceived loneliness. So this is why I'm so adamant about sharing resources on wellness that incorporate a truly integrative philosophy and considers all these interactions between the mind, the body, spirituality, lifestyle, relationships. And I think that now in my previous video, we looked at an example of this with the heart and the brain, right? How they're vitally connected. We talked about the biology of the brain and the heart and the stress connection and how stress impacts our heart health. We talked about the psychology of the heart brain and how our mood and our cognition impacts our heart and vice versa. We talked about the psychological factors that influence heart health, specifically social connections, and how we need to be mindful of heart health. And then I also provided some tips for heart care. So 
we want to stop this perpetuated cycle of cardiovascular disease standing in the number one cause of death in America and not moving because this has been for years now. And I think it's because we're ignoring the emotional, mental, and social health aspects of the mind-heart connection. So previously I have discussed about naturopathic medicine and how it moves beyond a diet, exercise, supplement, and medication approach. I believe that the secret sauce for naturopathic medicine and why it's been shown in clinical studies to actually support cardiovascular health and get better results than usual care and be cost effective is because naturopathic doctors form a therapeutic relationships with their clients and patients. And we know how healing this can be in the journey. And I already said that cardiovascular death, the number one risk factor isn't a healthy diet or exercise or even weight, it's isolation and perceived loneliness. So I feel that cardiologists may want to consider writing healthy relationships on their prescription pad to promote positive people connections, because this will only enhance any additional treatment and effective lifestyle intervention, such as movement and nourishing, so heart-filled, soulful food, right? That supplies all the nutrients our heart and our, and our brains need to function optimally. And I think we need to consider in medicine, as well as being the patient, the downstream impact of the interventions that are being offered on mental health and relationships. For example, prescribing restrictive elimination diets that can be stressful on the individual. It can promote disordered eating patterns and even avoidance of social settings. So this may be counterproductive and it could even exasperate nutrient deficiencies that are already present and contributing to heart disease. Now, dietary rules and body shaming have no place in healing and they've caused a lot of damage emotionally and socially in diet culture world. And unfortunately, it's etched its way into medicine a little too much, in my opinion. So our heart and our brain are connected on both the physical and emotional level. And I'm talking specifically about the heart because that's what we focused on. But it's really true with every other organ system or other, any other disease process that's going on in your body. There's a connection between all of these factors and how we think about them and how our mental state is and our relationship states. So I hope that you can use some of the tools that I provided in the previous post, as well as some of the tools I'm gonna be talking about, AKA essential oils, in my next post to support your brain and your heart to become more connected and more whole and to use them to nurture relationships in your life. And I also want to call out to the medical community to redefine cardiovascular care and make it more whole. And I have some suggestions if you'll let me be so humble to present them. I feel like we should consider the efficacy and wellness benefits of the mind-brain connection and the applications from the research of HeartMath Institute. I think as doctors, we should be open to new approaches and bridge valid ones with conventional treatments. We should avoid heightening adversary between various practices and in integrative heart medicine. This can damage patient trust and comfort levels. If you're a patient or a client, you probably have experienced maybe sometimes a friction between maybe a more holistic practitioner that you're seeing and a conventional doctor. Imagine how healing that would be if they came together as part of your team. And if everyone was open to acquainting themselves with out-of-the-box approaches to see how they might fit. Some in the heart with specifically related is this idea that the heart isn't just a pump, that there's a vortex of this energy and the thrombogenic hypothesis. I mean, really look into this and consider if, if it fits into conventional medicine. Because science is always about asking the question, right? And we want to keep at the forefront of all patient and client interactions the impact of healthy and unhealthy and absent relationships on cardiovascular wellness. It's something too, as a patient or a client, you want to consider when seeing your cardiologist or your uh, general healthcare provider. 
We also want to evaluate the role of blood type and genetics on cardiovascular risk and how epigenetic factors such as lifestyle, stress management, and nutrition can mitigate any harm. We want to assess the functional medicine antecedents, triggers, and media mediators. So these are things that set somebody out to have some predisposition to heart health issues, some things that continue to trigger it, and some things that keep, keep it going. We want to look at all those factors and how they're linked to heart and endothelial imbalances within an interkinetic system, systems-based model. And then finally, we want to promote to the public the use of mind body therapies and essential oils, which can be used to enhance emotional resiliency, stress relief, and hormonal balance for better intimacy skills and healthier hearts. More on that in the next video. But I do think it's time for all physicians to unite and be an example for their patients and clients and how when we pool our resources together and create healthy working relationships, we can get better results. As an individual, you can start now with some of the tools I've already went over in the previous video and just with the concepts I've shared here. Do you agree that this is important? I hope you do. And I'd love to hear more comments from you. And I want to let you know that coming soon, I'll have an invitation that's incorporating all of these aspects into hopefully a wonderful program where I can be your guide in this process of becoming a more vibrant, healthier, happier, whole person. I also want to point you to some additional resources that I will put in the video description if you want to learn more about my approach specifically, more about how to incorporate essential in oils into your life. You can see one of my recent updates on my YouTube channel, channel about the cool things I added to my essential oils online program and the community I'm trying to build there. And you can also check out the various other links at offers and free guides and all the fun stuff that you can get. So I really um, strongly believe in this topic and I'm very passionate about it. And I hope that you've learned some things and you can take it with you and share it with others. Have a wonderful day. I'll be back.